if you're unsure about what's the strongest army at your specific town hall, we have the perfect video for you here today. We're going to go over the strongest armies at Town Hall 9 all the way up to Town Hall 15 to ensure you 3 star as much as possible. Let's start with Town Hall 9, and it has to be Mass Witches. This army is insane. To do it, you're going to bring two golems, one in your regular camp and one in the CC, so you get that higher level golem. Uh, 14 witches, a couple of giants, and wall breakers, and you can see the spells there. Now, how do you pick where to attack from with this army? Well, you want to attack on a side, so it's like either this or this, and what you want from the side that you come on, A, you want it to be the tougher side of the base. You'd rather deal with the high-value defenses first and you need to be able to reach the whole base with uh, one wall breaker and two jump spells so on this base you're going to see knock luna comes from the top side because you deal with the queen expo and the wizard tower all early so the tougher side of the base then if we wall break this outer layer here and then we're going to get the color green here you jump once here and a second time here you have access to the entire base now how do you deploy it this is when we start the replay finally you're going to do a golem on the top side of your push and a golem on the bottom side then five witches on each corner as you can see here then you're going to have the four remaining witches and the king and queen in the middle you'll put your wall break in front of them send one test wall breaker then the rest of your wall breakers as you see here now you're going to see he actually uses the freeze spell to stop the queen here Queen and Expos are high value targets. So you see the Witches, there is a lot of them on the outside of the base, but they are going to clear so much of value. There is the jump spell into the core. We're going to have a Golem, actually both Golems and a couple of Witches go in. And then in the core of the base, this is when you use your heal spell. You need your troops to stay tanky in the core of the base. And then you'll notice he's already put the back end jump spell down. Now you're going to realize he makes a mistake here, puts the jump spell down a little too early because they don't last that long. But have a look at the push. He's still, we still have all the witches on the bottom side that just deal with the hound easy. We have all the witches on the top side. And you can see this is the point of the giant in the army up here. Use it to tank your wizard tower on the outside of the base or any defenses to make sure your witches don't get sniped. So yeah, that just use their giants basically to tank the out, outer perimeter defenses. Unfortunately, look at this. The jump spell is about to run out here just on the queen. I had to laugh at this. Yeah, look at that. Really unlucky there, but it didn't matter. This base got obliterated with this army. Hopefully, in this quick little a minute and a half that we've had, I've given you enough tips to master it yourself. But a really, really strong army dominates all styles of Town Hall 9 bases. You just got to pick the right angle to come from. Let's move along to Town Hall 10, and it's a very similar army, but we're substituting all those spells for Lightning and Earthquake. So we're going to bring a third golem with this one, but it's all about the Lightning and the Earthquake, because what you're going to do, you need four Lightning and one Earthquake to take down an Inferno Tower. So you're going to take down both Inferno Towers on the base. Now, it doesn't matter if they're single or multi. That's what I really like about this. Doesn't matter the setting of it. Just take them out. So we'll start the replay here. Notice how he spreads out the lightnings to impact as many defenses as possible. Puts the earthquake down perfectly. And we take down the two archer towers as well. Same thing here. We're going to take down the uh, single inferno and the wizard tower. So we've taken down two high value defenses and you're essentially going to roll over the rest of the base. Very similar to what we saw in the last attack. You're going to pick one side to come from. Uh, it matters a little less if it's the stronger side of the base, but you still prefer that even though uh, Mosin isn't going to do that here. You spread out your three golems on the flanks, two tank for the witches. Then we're going to use the wall breakers here. I believe we just failed the first layer wall break. That's all right. Once the funnel is kind of set, then you can put your witches and king and queen straight through the middle here. And uh, this is going to be wrecked. Now, you do need to bring more wall breakers with this army because you do not have the jump spells. But you can afford to be really patient with your wall breaks look at that wall break on the top side perfectly done gonna open up this core of the base here and now that the core is open this base has no chance essentially all you have to do with this army is use the lightning and earthquake effectively set a really good funnel and if you get your wall breakers done right you are oh, i mean it is going to be a triple now what i didn't point out is the cc you're going to bring bowlers in the cc because look at the work they can do just right here Bouncing the expo and also damaging that archer tower. 
They are the best ranged troop at low town halls. Queen is beating a wall here. This will happen a few times. Also, the witches are beating a wall because you don't have the jump spells. But because you've used your lightning and earthquakes to take down the two multi-infernos, or the two single infernos, whatever setting they may be, it's essentially like attacking a Town Hall 9 at this point, except you have Town Hall 10 level troops, and this base gets completely crushed. We'll skip through the last little bit of this. But yeah. Very similar to the Town Hall 9 one, but it's just a, an extra level, essentially. Instead of using mass spells, we are going to overwhelm the base with our troops and taking out those pesky Inferno Towers. Is it going to be Witches at Town Hall 11? Town Hall 11, and let's move to the air attacks. It's Zap Dragons. Now, Zap Dragons is really strong at Town Hall uh, 10 as well, so you can definitely use that there, but we went with the Witches for that one, but definitely Zap Drags at Town Hall 11. For this uh, army, Loki's just bringing four Lightning and two Quake. I know some people bring uh, like eight Lightning if they want and uh, a bunch of Quake, but zapping two air defenses is enough so we're going to use that to take out the two air defenses and you'll see the rest from there so look we zap quake that top compartment notice how he deliberately places the lightning and quake to take down the arch tower as well you're going to see the same on the bottom side here zap and quake away now so we've we've zapped out two opposing air defenses and then what we're gonna do we're gonna use our queen to sui for one final air defense now if you need to use your king with this as well you definitely can but he doesn't need the queen here and what i really like about why he picked this air defense to go for with the queen is he's also going to get the defensive queen down. You don't really want your def uh, your dragons to deal with the queen if you can help it. Much better to have your king and queen, or king if you need it, but at least the queen get an air defense and the defensive queen down. If you can do that, you will be set up for success. And look at how nice this funnel is. Now, you always always want to go straight into the eagle artillery it is a major defense and if you take it down early there's just not enough dps on the base to take down all these dragons so yeah always go straight into the eagle artillery and gonna take this down nice and early here also helps that we're not fighting a sweeper uh you can afford to bring a two extra lightning for the sweepers if you want but did not need it here and then pop that warden ability beautifully in the core. Just use it to negate the uh, air traps, single infernos, multi infernos, you name it. And now we, he uses, so he mistimes this, but what you want to do is use your lava hound that's in the CC to tank the final air defense take that down not really much the base can do to stop the rest so he is a little early on this so the lava hound won't tank but thankfully we've got our king and a wall breaker to take down that final air defense look at this heal spell perfectly placed actually i guess i'm wrong with that but a, technically a well-placed heal spell because you always want to place your heal spell next to the high hp buildings because your drags are going to spend a long time there which means more time to be healed and I mean, look at how many dragons are still up. This is ridiculous. Now, he does bring a bat spell with this. The point of a bat spell is it does really well at tanking air targeting defenses. But I don't think you would act necessarily need the bat spell with this one. You could replace that uh, if you want to bring more lightning and quake to take down a third air defense. Or you could just bring a freeze spell instead. But I mean, look at this. So many dragons still up. Not even close. And worth noting with this... No siege machine. Obviously, at Town Hall 11 and Town Hall 10, you can bring a siege machine, but we didn't show it in these replays because you can't train it yourself. But if you're lucky enough to have higher level Town Halls in Clan, you can bring the siege machine, bring the Stone Slammer or the Blimp with this one, and this army goes to the next level. Witches are back at Town Hall 12, but you'll notice one difference here is that we do bring eight Lightning and one Quake rather than two Quake. Now, that's only because the two multi-infernos that are going to be lightning here are this one and this one. And you only need one quake spell to damage both of them. However, if the two multi-infernos or the two infernos that you are lightning are not in quake range, then you just need to drop this freeze spell that you see here for a second quake. But trust me, it still works. But one difference with this is obviously super troops. Uh, and we have the Super Wizard at Town Hall 12, and it takes this army to the next level. You also have Siege Machines at Town Hall 12, which means we can bring the Log Launcher. So how's he going to do this? Let's have a look. So look at that. We're going to do four Lightning and one Quake on both of these Multi-Infernos. 
He's taking his time here. I mean, you got to, you got to make sure you take them down. Then the earthquake, and look at that. We get that all down nicely. And the point of the log launcher of this army is to take down the final multi inferno before you even have to deal with it. So imagine this: there's three multi infernos on the base, which sounds anti witch, but. If none of them are ever active in range to take them down, then this army just kills. Yet again, same exact thing. We have three golems. You put one on each side of the flank and one in the middle. You put around five or six witches. I think he's doing five here. Five witches behind the flanking golems and then the remainder down the middle. And have a look at this log launcher here. It is going to completely wreck this multi-inferno. Just crushed. It does not do anything. And once the funnel's set, we send our super wizards in the middle. Now... The attacker does make a mistake here of not getting the queen to go on the base. That is not what you want at all. And he has to pop the warden ability early because of that rocket balloon. But I mean, look at this. What's the base going to do? It cannot stop this mayhem. And if you're wondering if this army is still effective without the freeze, have a look here. The super wizards would have taken more damage, but they definitely would have got the tunnel down there, even if we did not have the freeze. King's on the top side, unfortunately, or the defensive king's putting in work. So that part of the attack will fall apart, but we've still got our queen on the bottom side of the funnel. Still got a P.E.K.K.A. in the middle. Uh, that P.E.K.K.A. came out of the log launcher, so bring a P.E.K.K.A. and an ice golem and a giant. No, P.E.K.K.A. ice golem. I'm trying to remember how much in a CC you can fit at each town hall. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, the Pekka Ice Golem is what was brought here. And I mean, look, these witches will eventually die out on the top side. But we still have so much left up here. There's just... Once you take out all the multi-infernos, the witches are just going to completely take down the base. Perfectly done there from this attacker. And you can see in the CC, yep, Ice Golem and a Pekka is the way to go. E-Drags finally make their debut at Town Hall 13. We could have put them in at Town Hall 11, but Town Hall 13 was a definite yes. Now, you'll notice with this army comp, particularly the spell comp that Diablo is bringing, it is a little unusual, and I personally wouldn't recommend this spell comp. I would recommend dropping the skeleton spell, removing one freeze to add a fourth rage spell, but this can definitely work as well, completely up to you. And in terms of the army comp, uh, if you don't need a wall break, as you can see, this base is completely open. If you don't need a wall breaker for your heroes, then this army comp is best. But if you need to bring one super wall breaker, then just drop a headhunter and a sneaky gob, and that will work out fine. Rest is spot on, though, because you're going to notice he brings the slammer with this attack, and I really like that, but we'll point that out later. How do you start this attack? Well, kind of like that. You put an e drag on either side of the funnel, they set the funnel, and then the rest of the e drags first then the balloons now why am i pausing it here which side do you come on with e drags well with e drags you want to go you don't want to go into the town hall but outside of the town hall you want to go into the area which has the highest value on the base however you do not want to go against two sweepers so you have to keep that in mind but this is okay because there's only one sweeper here as you see but also keep in mind we can chain this sweeper watch what happens as soon as these e dragons get into the core here so as i was saying e drags balloons slammer warden pop your ability if you're bringing uh sorry i keep pausing it if you're bringing four rage spells you can double rage at the start but because diablo is only bringing three he brings one rage spell but look that sweeper is gone already and now our e-drags have a free path gonna pause it again so much is going on the heroes are on the top side and i do like the skeleton spell in the army for this he uses the skeleton spell to tank for the heroes so you're gonna have your e-dragons come in on one side of the base and then once they're down and the wardens are popped use your king and queen on the other because they can take out a whole portion of the base and they're actually going to get the town hall here which is what makes bringing the stone slammer okay as you can tell the e-dragons not all of them are going to go into the base in fact most of them probably won't but it's all about using the spells on the e-dragons that do make it into the core notice this e-dragon we're using the rages and freezes on one e-dragon but that's because it deals with the defensive cc it deals with a scatter shot it's getting so much value actually i think that was an expo not a scatter shot look at this on the cc we'll take down a wizard tower and heavily weaken the warden and the scatter shot so much value and then the rc is going to take down the town hall is it a little bit risky Yes, and I'll show you in the next attack, because E-Drags are at Town Hall 14 as well. I'll show you in the next attack how you can do this army with the blip. But the RC is so good at taking down the Town Hall that I don't think you necessarily need... Uh, 
you don't necessarily have to use the blimp look at how many a drags are up we have two heroes up as well i'm sorry for all the pausing during the attack but there's so much going on so quickly in this army this base was tripled in a minute 30 you will never time fail with a drags an extremely strong army really fun to do as well it's just all about picking your angle and using your spells correctly e drags again at town hall 14 i did say it in the last one so no surprise here however worth noting the addition of the rocket balloons you'll see why they're included in this army it makes it really strong this is a more of a normal spell comp so this is what i would bring with e drags personally and you're about to see the value of that but let's get straight into it you can notice he's already placed two regular balloons and then two rocket balloons up the top and essentially we're clearing a path for us to blimp the town hall if there's any seeking air mines there the rocket balloons would have found it then the blimp's gonna land on the tunnel and just gonna use a freeze spell here just to be a hundred percent safe about it really nicely done and this makes the rest of the attack so easy you don't have to worry about the tunnel so this definitely could have been done in the last attack that we saw at tunnel 13 but you don't have to do it but i just wanted to show you this one in case uh you did decide to do that and then yeah spam the e-drags make sure you put one e-drag up the top to set the funnel on the top side then the king and queen on the bottom side and uh yeah this uh, this base is in a lot of trouble because have a look at the e-drag chains we're gonna see here and you're about to see the classic double rage and warden ability i believe so there goes the warden ability there's one rage there is the other and look at how much work's gonna get done whilst these troops are invincible that's what's so good about this it's just so much of the base disappears whilst none of your troops can die single inferno is being a pain and yeah that is a swag freeze and then look at this rage in the core oh my lord this base is just disappearing unfortunately the warden is taking down uh defenses you don't really like that and actually having the owl on the warden is more annoying than not but look at this cleared out the entire core of the base and now it's just up to our heroes to clear out the rest with the addition of pets at town 14 this is definitely easy king queen warden rc all of them still up crazy hit here but don't worry, I've got another one because I want to show you guys E-Drags on ring bases as well. Here we are with a proper ring base. I had to put one in the video. Yes, Town Hall 14 technically does get two attacks. I'm sorry to all you other Town Hall players who are a little jealous that your Town Hall didn't get two attacks. But I wanted to show you this because there's always people being like, Hooked, you did not show a ring base. I'm showing you it here. E-Drags are fantastic on ring bases. And Ruposh's attack here is going to be a perfect showing of it. So it's the exact same as before. You're going to use one E-Drag to set a funnel on the bottom side. Then the King and Queen on the other side. And spam the rest of the E-Drags straight down the middle. E-Dragons first. Then your regular balloons. Then we're going to double rage and warden ability. But notice this. For a ring base, Ruposh is just going to bring the slammer. No need to blimp. Your E-Drags will take down the town hall anyway. So don't need to worry about that. I actually like that he's delaying the warden ability here. I, won't, I wouldn't normally recommend that. But his E-Drags weren't really taking any damage at all at the start. So better to wait a second. And I mean, look at the core of this base. Just going to get wrecked. This is when you've got to use your freeze spells wisely. Freeze the right defenses to make sure your E-Drags are basically unkillable. Tornado is a problem, but the E-Drags completely wreck that defensive queen. Get all of the chains in the world. Now we have our RC and the queen on the top side. It probably wasn't smart to put them straight into the toughest part of the base, but we've still got a bunch of spells. We've still got all the E-Dragons on the bottom and away we go now worth also noting this is the best pet combo we are at town hall 14 here so obviously pets are a thing this is the best best pet combo doesn't really matter what army it is at town hall 14 and yeah completely wrecked that's how you take down a ring base don't bring the blimp bring the slammer we finally made it to town hall 15 and we've got a surprise for you up our sleeves because this is probably not the army you're expecting it we're going to come in with Super Minion Clone Super Dragons. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are expecting like a Super Archer Clone attack, maybe with the E-Titans, with the Super Barbs, or with the uh, Hydra attacks. But this army is better than those because it's so hard to bait Super Minion Clones. A lot of bases aren't doing that. Whereas it's quite easy to bait the Super Archer Clone attacks and it's quite easy to mess up 
the clone spells as well. Whereas the super minions are really easy. So what are you going to do with this army? You're going to pick an angle to come in from. Now, if the angle you're coming in from has a sweeper in the way, you can afford the two lightning spells, as you can see Alfonso does here. You can afford those two lightning spells to take it down. Uh, if you, if not, you just bring like an extra rage spell or some extra freezes. You're going to set the funnel here with not one, but two super drags. Generally, you'll just use one though. Uh, one super drag to set the funnel on the top side. Then you're going to use the king and queen generally on the top side. But Alfonso just decides to use the queen here. Doesn't see a lot of extra value to be gained from using the king. And I tend to agree with him. These super drags are going to take down the town all for free. Really smartly done here from Alfonso. But yeah, queen on the top side is going to get the air defense and the defensive RC. And then we're going to start in with our super drags. We only have four of them left. But trust me, it will be enough. Because these super dragons are extremely strong. So we're coming in with the spam. Keep in mind the eagle's already down. There's our first rage spell. Warden ability. The blimp eats a Sam, but that's okay. And you're going to see right here the benefit of the super minion clone. That bomb tower is set up to be anti-super archer clone. Now, of course, you could land in this compartment if you wanted. And it'd probably work, but I bet there's a lot of spring traps in that compartment. Whereas with the super minion clone, you can land wherever you want. They're better against spell towers as well. And look at the value they can get now if there is a bunch of red bombs they can be baited i will admit that but a lot of bases don't really have that at the moment and you'll see this base actually does have it so why am i showing you this because he triples anyway like if he if you're getting baited with it you're still getting awesome value and you triple that's a pretty good endorsement for the attack strategy. Now we're just waiting for the super drags to come along. And then we're going to use the king and our RC together. And they're going to clear up the rest of the base. Because we've still got a few spells. That's something really good about this army compared to super archer clone attacks. Super archer clone attacks, you use every spell at the start. So if you need a spell for the rest of the attack, if a single inferno locks on your queen, too bad. You have to accept that that single inferno will never leave your queen alone. Whereas with this, you still got a couple extra spells, which is why I definitely rate it as an army. And I like that Alfonso picked this one. A, a non-typical army is the way I would put it, but still extremely effective and much harder to bait. Wall breaker on the back end, and now it's just about using our invis spell with the RC and her ability. We've actually got the Yeti here. It was trying to get rid of the air defense, but doesn't really matter. Does some good work there. RC invis to get rid of the multi-inferno. Pop the king ability as well. And that is a GG. Not an overkill, but given the fact that the blimp kind of got baited, it's a pretty good sign for the army. King and RC overwhelm the back end of the base. And that's the video for you all. We had Town Hall 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. The best attack strategy at each. And my question for you guys is, did you enjoy this type of video? What would you like to see done differently? Uh, did you enjoy my commentary? Did I miss a few things? Or do you think we got it wrong? Let us know in the comments which army you would have at each town hall. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you're struggling for a trophy base for your town hall, I'll link on the left. We recently did a best trophy base for every town hall in Clash of Clans.